Hey, it's HJ. Okay, so I ran across this amazing article that I got at a friend's bridal shower when she's about to get married. This really is just a go-to for the women in my church, so I'm just going to go over a few of the most important ones in my life personally, so it's kind of going to be like a personal look into my life, like, hey, what's up? Get into my business. It's called Keys to a Truly Wonderful Marriage by Chris Goertzen. So whether you're single or you're married, definitely stay tuned for keys to a truly wonderful marriage. <laughs> Choose to be predictably happy. And one thing that I've learned, especially from being a person that can lose joy very easily. Yes, you love Jesus and can lose your joy very easily. Yes. That is me all the way. Roman is reminding me and encouraging me in the scriptures on to be joyful all the time, like on a weekly basis. He has all the stress of providing for a family, being the spiritual leader of a marriage, all of the big weighty things are on his shoulders. The least I can do as his helpmate is just to be joyful and be happy and just know that no matter what's going on outside of these walls, outside of these doors, he can come home and see his joyful wife and that can just be one less burden on him. Unfortunately, <laughs> I have not mastered this one. I definitely need to choose joy more often. Our job is to not add to his burden, but our job is to lift his burden by being joyful in the Lord and shining that joyful light on him. Definitely choose to be predictably happy. Okay, this is a really good one too. Thank him continually for providing for you. This is one that I really do try to do because the number one thing, a biblical mandate, is for a husband to provide for his wife. If he's a man of God, he feels that weight and he is thinking, am I providing, am I providing, I wanna be providing, whether it be a physical provision, whether it be spiritual provision, you just wanna encourage them by thanking them and saying, I notice that the number one job that God has given you to do you're doing it and you're doing it well and just praise him for all of the things he's doing right in that area and maybe he's not doing the best in that area still be encouraging and allow the Holy Spirit to change his heart and to change his mind where he might need to be changed where he might need growth in the area of provision when he comes home like you know throughout the week run up to him, give him a kiss, give him a hug like thank you for going to work today I know you may not have had the best day or I know that Roman doesn't really like going to work. He's used to working from home. So just recently he started a job at the news station and he's like, oh, I have to go to work and it just feels so weird. I'd rather be at home. And I just say, I know you don't like going, but thank you. Thank you for going. Thank you for providing and doing what you have to do to be a man of God. And that little encouragement, I can tell that it really does go a long way with him. So I'm pretty sure it will with your husband too. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. Okay. Share with him what God is doing in your life. Another way to keep Christ at the center of your marriage is just to keep your focus on Christ through thinking about him and talking about him. Whenever you bring a conversation up that has to do with Christ, you're encouraging and you're helping your husband think and talk and dwell and fall even more in love with God as you reminisce on all the things that he's done in your life. So just talk with your husband about what you've learned or what God has used in your life to help you grow this week or what you've been praying about that hasn't been answered yet and ask to pray with him or what you've been praying about that has been answered and just praise God in front of your husband, praise God with your husband and encourage him through just being in love with Christ and just making God the center of your conversations and yeah that's a that's a really great thing to do something that I definitely need to do more for sure I mean I like to talk about God but can we really ever talk about God enough you know what I mean and then to go with that I think a uh, it would be like part two to that, is ask him to pray for you about something. Sometimes men just have so much going on in their minds when their husbands and their fathers and they're like, we have to make the money and we have to pay these bills and we have to be here and we have soccer practice and we have to be at the school meeting and, and they're being spread thin in so many areas in their mind. Plus, Dudes' minds are super compartmentalized. They're not like women's minds, so they don't think the way that we do. So sometimes we just need to remind our husband, hey, I need you to read with me. Hey, I need you to pray with me. Hey, I need you to, you know, help me spiritually this evening. I've been having a really bad week. So don't be afraid to remind your husband in love and with grace that you guys haven't read in a couple days or you guys haven't prayed in a couple days and just 
ask your husband to pray with you because it's one thing to pray to God on your own and build that personal relationship with you and the Lord, but whenever you and your husband hold hands or you lean on his shoulder or you're just together and you're lifting your hearts up together before the Lord, it not only builds this bond, but it builds this bond between you two in a, such a beautiful spiritual way that nothing else is going to do. No movie watching or game playing or walk in the park is going to build your marriage like praying with one another so ask him to pray for you ask him to pray with you and just continually talk about Christ with him and that will do a lot for your marriage okay maybe part three on what I just said would be ask him how you can pray for him definitely keep up with the spiritual needs of your husband and just say hey how can I pray for you we love to keep up with the spiritual needs of our husband by way of this is what you're doing wrong and this is how you need to grow and this is what you need to do right to be a better husband and to be a better man of God but we need to keep up spiritually with our husbands by way of how can I pray for you? How can I serve you better? How can I help you grow in this area? And then we pray to the Holy Spirit over here and say, Holy Spirit, please help him in this area because he needs some love. He needs some guidance. He needs some wisdom. And he won't listen to me, so he's got to listen to you. <laughs> and then we trust God that he wants our husbands to grow more than we ever could. So we trust the Lord with that. Um, so just ask him how you can pray for him and how you can love him and help him grow. Okay, I just want to say, <laughs> I am not the best at any of these. I'm not sitting here telling you these things because I'm great at them and I'm like, I got this on lock. Let me show you what you need to do. No, I am talking about these things as a reminder to myself, like, dang. I need to be gracious with him. I need to do this with him. I need to do that with him. Or I need to do this for myself, for his sake. It's crazy. The more you grow, the more you look ahead and you see, dang, you really realize how much further you have to grow. And so by no means am I coming to you as an expert. These are my keys to a truly wonderful marriage. And if you like this video, thumbs up, subscribe, make sure to share with your friends who are wifeys or gonna be wifeys or maybe they're not and they just need to learn ahead of time and you're trying to prepare you single ladies for the day that you're gonna be a wife, that's all right, get your preparation on. That's, you know, you gotta gear up before you go into battle. <laughs>